little long striding. Right. And so, like, even the backing up and everything, just getting to where it's like, he's, all that stuff moves faster, it moves together, like he's not dragging feet as much. Right. Like that way he can stay under it. He's not getting this, he's just starting to kind of come together instead of being strung out just just so how, like a bigger longer strided horse like that how do you get them to like pick basically just pick them up and put them down faster well this a good thing about him is he's been long trotted a lot he's just been trotted and he hasn't just been low circles because he he had a job in a feedlot versus you know he didn't come from a rain or cutter he had loped a lot of circles and so yeah i think just kind of getting him to where and hold him together and push him up in the bridle a little more. Everything's just been kind of here, here you go, this long and this away. And so just making him shorten his stride and low, speed him up, shorten it back down before. I do a lot of anything else on him. I'm gonna probably try to do it in circles and just getting him to come off my legs and just kind of put all these pieces a little bit more together to where they don't, it's not just all front wheel drive driven from the race. <clears throat> So, like one of the things that you always hear is like you're kicking and pulling and like that's bad. How do you cue and keep them in the bridle at the same time without? Well, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, no, it is, and it is a lot of times, and that's usually when when that is bad. And I'll say that a lot is when you're facing the horse um, because, especially if the horse already has a bad habit. What we we're working on with those lessons yesterday is just have bad habits of facing and when a horse knows that they've been faced wrong like they've been brought over like this so many times and then you try to push your leg through and make them face correct uh, but when you do both of those at the same time and this is the one they're used to they're used to that that's going to always override it and basically waste your time giving this cue when you give one that is already a habit. When you're trying to break a habit, you've got to completely break it, not try to mix the two, because they're going to always revert back to the one they know and the one they're comfortable with. What if they were started right and then, can well, you bring them back? It doesn't, t I mean, at some point they've been faced wrong or you wouldn't be trying to fix it. So, I mean, it is easier, like I love getting on a horse that that has been broke at one time, even though they've been unbroke yeah. down the road, because it doesn't take long to get back down to that, uh, as long as that foundation was put in them. And like I say, sometimes they just need to be road right and give confidence that you're not gonna give the wrong cues. So right. I try to get people to do it without cattle. Like just do a trot, like simulate it, but just trot and no cattle, because, mainly not for the horse, because the rider gets so much pure, clearer cues and there's not cattle involved because everybody when they get the rope and it gets too much going on fogged 